we know what Peter Wright said right. about the attempt to discredit the Labour government mm. by controlled leaks, by extraordinary stories through the appalling Cecil King and his mirror, mm. through the general dirty tricks. And that must arouse in us the suspicion right. that the Conservative government has an interest in keeping the security services well muffled so that they can go on with a potential capacity to rubbish any opposition which would fit in with the authoritarianism that, that uh, uh, at last plagues us today. The other point, it seems to me, is that what pales into insignificance is Anthony Blunt and Philby selling secrets to the Russians. That seems to me to matter a good deal less than Anthony Blunt and Philby and many others controlling the flow of information to the policymakers, to the government, and thereby influencing government policy. It seems to me that that's a risk that we ought to be looking at, less matters of people selling secrets or disclosing secrets or betraying things to the Russians, more trying to uh, uh, manipulate government policy by carefully feeding the right information, true or manufactured, to policy makers and ministers. Exactly it seems to me, right. it, it seems to me we come back to Merlin once again and practical action. That's a piece of practical action that, if I may say so, I think as a rank outsider ought to be looked at. Merlin Rees, can I ask you to, uh, one sometimes gets the impression from the things that you have said in the past and indeed what you said this evening, that sometimes you felt that in terms of, perhaps in terms of Northern Ireland, perhaps in terms of your role as the Home Secretary, that uh, you were not given a vast amount of information from, the inter from intelligence sources. Is, is, is that true? I was given all I required in Northern Ireland, which is a separate issue. Um, in terms of my, my job, um, I simply read again uh, what are the rules. Mm -hmm. you, Will main, you, you and your staff, says the rules, mm -hmm. will maintain the well-established convention whereby ministers do not concern themselves with detailed information. The mushroom that, treatment. Keep speaking in your dark and feed your shit. That, now, the point, the point at issue that I am concerned about is that, and it's the one thing that I have chased in the House of Commons, unsuccessfully, is the dirty tricks. I do not believe that that is in any sense the interest of the state under any definition that we're talking about, or the country, or anything else. And um, uh, there is no doubt in my mind that things went on, not just during the life of the Labour government, but before, uh, before 74. Well, quite right, 1924. No, no, uh, by, by, all I'm saying is denigration of members of the Labour Party, uh, who might well be ministers one day, went on before 74, before the government was formed. Sure. And uh, there's no doubt about that. Now, that was not investigated properly, in my view. Mrs. That Thatcher is says the... it has been, of course. Pardon? Mrs. Thatcher says it has been but investigated. It hasn't. I mean, she wouldn't know, because I'm not playing political games. No prime minister knows what went on in the previous administration. So she's telling somebody else's lie? No, no. I mean, I, I don't... There's been no investigation, though. I, I don't believe that there's any help in doing it that way. What she says is that it was looked at... Uh, in the days of Lord Callaghan and myself as Prime Minister and, and, and Home Secretary, I don't accept that. And then she asked for it to be looked at again in her day. That is the point that I'm talking about, and it's why I was asking for an inquiry into that aspect of things. And we didn't get that. I thought on the day the Prime Minister was coming to the House, the impression I had, I obviously was very wrong, was that there was going to be an inquiry, but there wasn't. Now, that doesn't come, in my view, doesn't no. come under any definition of the official Don't slide sequence. past this. She said there was an inquiry, and as Sir Anthony Duff conducted an That's inquiry. That's what she says, yes. Now, when the journalists the next day, the higher media, went back to all their sources, Peter Wright and all the people Peter Wright named, and Colin Wallace and all That's other right. people who made allegations, nobody had been spoken to. That's right. There had been an invisible inquiry. Yeah. But whatever. You agree. But, but, but yes, I, I don't know about the facts that you're talking about. All I am saying is under any uh, official secrets act, there is no way that it would stop me, I don't mean me as an individual, as a parliamentarian, carrying on question that, questioning that. There's no way that that could... Uh, could, well, what could, could you do tomorrow about stop? Jock Kane's allegations? Jock Kane and Gary if Ryan. you were in well, a position tomorrow? The, 
uh, I leave that one out of the way because I feel... Or any uh, allegation. The allegation that you make. Now, Jock Kane's allegations that were made just now were about, what, King Cora, was it? Jock Kane. Oh, no. Sorry, G -G I beg your pardon. And it, but I thought you meant your, your allegations. You no, mean so John? It, it, Robin Reynolds, it's, not, it's not Robin trying to explain the allegations. I'm just to... laying the, the, the Sorry, yes. how would you deal with an allegation tomorrow if you were in a well, position let's, to let's take them in order. There's yours about, uh, about uh, GCHQ <clears> that you've been involved in. There's yours about the actions of uh, members of MI5 in taking you on as a, a contract Office. Nothing wrong with that in principle. No. I'm not complaining about no. that. But what they are to do. Then there's the question about King Cora, which seems to go back a long, long way, which I, I know nothing about. So I, I, I'd rather take these two. If I were Foreign Secretary or if I were Prime Minister, those allegations that you have made, at, I don't know how old they are, for example, how long ago or wherever, but they are things that need to be looked at very firmly by the Security Commission, by a special inquiry or whatever. They're very serious. They're very serious. Uh, allegations and yours are very serious uh, uh, allegations these are the two that concern me tonight and if they came on my plate I would find a way in discussion with the Prime Minister of the day in getting them investigated in the pos best possible well, these are just two no, allegations we've got numerous other what, allegations what, what, do you think, what do you think the, the motivation then for the government not having uh, uh, an investigation into the allegations specifically about uh, the, the destabilization that allegedly went on as far as Harold Wilson's government was concerned. What do you think the motivation is? Well, the, the Prime Mrs. Thatcher has stated in the House of Commons that there were two inquiries, one under in her day by uh, Lord Call Jim Callaghan. And the, the one in my day with James Callaghan. On the first part, she's misconceived. And she is the Prime Minister, and she has said, no, I shall not stop ever querying that but in the curious country we live in no one seems to be it, it is not continued on to some degree i come back to my point earlier the case is ruined by blanket allegations uh, and stuff in the press headlines that that, that prevent the particular points being taken well just have a second failure to apply the nostrum never believe anything until it's been officially denied <laughs> claude coburn let me stick with something you said, because it is being carried on. There is, in fact, an MP, a Labour MP, who has done precisely what you said, which is to hammer away at a number of very specific points, and that's Ken Livingston. Now, Melvin shakes his head, but Ken is doing it. Ken has asked 100, 150 questions mm. in the last year. Mm. I've got and he's a, asked questions about myself, indeed. and after making the questions of the House of Commons, he's spoken to the press. I don't think, did Ken speak to the press about your stuff? You sure? Yes, uh, Liam Clark. He spoke to Liam Clark. And Liam Clark. Did he not do so? Liam Clark has researched the Sunday Times. He uh, made his uh, named the people, the Sussex police who interviewed me, mm -hmm. in the Irish News. Mm -hmm. So, so what? So what? Isn't that a journalist's job? It is a journalist's job. It's a journalist's job to find out why Parliament has got secret old boy societies. Well, I mean, the, the Privy Council is an interesting sidetrack, but a sidetrack nonetheless. Yes, it is. I mean, it's an interesting sidetrack because in 1974, the Privy Council bureaucracy, which is to say that building mm. in, down the road there, was actually subscribing to the publications of Geoffrey Stuart Smith. And he was putting out, he was, he was putting out all this, this anti-left, anti-labor. The Privy Council was? The Privy Council was. Ken Living, uh, he told me that. The Privy Council? Privy Council subscribed to Geoffrey Stuart Smith's publications, and Geoffrey Stuart Smith told me this. It doesn't year. exist, the Privy Council. Ken Livingston asked a question this year, would, would the Privy Council please list all the magazines it subscribes to, and it's currently subscribing to about 16. Ah, but you see, this is, this is where the whole thing goes fucked. The Privy Council, three, five hundred years old, there's a small number are in the cabinet. Mm. The Privy Council office uh, subscribes to magazines. Mm. What on earth does that prove? Well, to You're me... You're spoiling the case. For, well, forgive but me. It was a side track introduced by the Council. have it. got solicitors. The mm. solicitors they do have the power. Privy Councilors. And the one most powerful to all this was Peter Carter Ruck. The solicitor mm, to maybe. the Privy Council. I think, to, to, and I think we are following a red herring here. Yeah, well, I, 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 I don't think it's We're Robert drifting from yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 you will make your point. Just yeah. carry on. Well, I forgot which point I was making. I was wondering, this might be a good time, since we're talking about dirty tricks in Northern Ireland, to introduce thieves. Now, as part of the dirty tricks operation against the Wilson government in Northern Ireland, uh, which was done in run through Northern Ireland, MI5 sent over various packages of disinformation to a uh, British Army 
information po thing called information policy, which was a British Army what psyops. Date, what unit. date was that? This is 1974. Right. I have two of these examples here. One is a completely bogus pamphlet, allegedly written by Dennis Healy, Tony Benn, and Stan Orme, yes. called Economics, Master or Servant of Mankind. Now, in the top right-hand corner, it says non-UK, which meant it was an instruction to the person handling the material, don't show this to a UK journalist, because any UK journalist would see Dennis Healy and Tony Benn as co-authors of anything and know it was rubbish. And there's another one here, a pamphlet, that, a leaflet that was distributed in Northern Ireland in the same year, MI5 again, apparently published by Merlin Rees, Stan Orme, David Owen, and Paul Rose. Now, Paul Rose, of course, is retired as an MP, and Stan Orme, I think, is no, is, uh, no longer really prominent in the Labour Party, but at that point, he was a junior minister, wasn't he, Merlin? He was a junior minister with Northern me. Northern Ireland. Yeah. Now, these are very faded, because they've been photocopies of photocopies of photocopies. If you want to see what MI5's misinformation looks like, here are two rather faded examples. This is, if you want evidence, evidence, proof. And Peter Wright, touched that much of it. Well, what, is, what is the proof that they come from MI5? That's the point. That's what I'd like to know. Well, the proof in any literal sense, no, I can't. I don't have the originals, so we, we couldn't even go back and have the paper examined. See, I don't believe they you were from believe? MI5. You I don't. know about Well, who, well who, who did they come from then? Well, <laughs> that they emanated from Northern Ireland at that time. Really? That the, yes, you don't think it came from MI5? Well, I have no, not? no, not the slightest reason to believe that they may have come from a disinformation department. See this typeface? It's, what, it's the typeface IRD used as well. I mean, ah, but now that's not MI5, you see. I agree. I said as well. Yes. Now, you see, if you are arguing, now this comes back to my interest. Why is this such a problem to you, Merlin, to accept this is MI5? Because I don't believe it was. Well, but you believe Peter Wright? I, the Peter Wright aspect, I don't be necessarily believe all he's written, no, no, uh, no. But, and uh, a lot of other people don't. But, but in terms of Northern Ireland, I do not accept that that came from MI5, that it happened, that uh, it came from other sources, and that it was published in Northern Ireland, and it is complete and utter rubbish. Uh, that published at the time. I mean, obviously rubbish that, that was written sure. there. Sure. But I don't believe it came from MI5. And I believe, in terms of my wider interest, my name bandied about uh, by some nutcase in that, right. that sort of thing. I feel very strongly about it. And so do other people. And it needs to be looked at. I do not believe it was from MI5. But that's another matter. Well, it ought to be looked at. Another candidate, perhaps. Well, well. Could I ask you, Peter, Peter Wright, in his book, <laughs> makes a specific sure. charge that MI5 uh, plotted against the uh, Labour government mm. and tried to organise its uh, um, uh, overthrow. Well, um, what are your views about that? Do you think there's anything in that, or is that something that Peter Wright... Um, I think there's something in it. They wouldn't a great have, deal. They wouldn't have had the, the um, inquiry in 70, 77 yeah. otherwise, and Mrs. Yeah. Thatcher wouldn't have had another one. Right. Um, there, there Alleged was, inquiry. They're led, well, of course. But they're, they're, well, let's get it. Of course yeah. there's, there's, there's something in it. Whether it was related <laughs> to this rubbish <laughs> in Northern Ireland yeah. is a different matter. Yeah. But they both ought to be, both ought to be looked at. They're not the interest of the state.